Hello people, I'm the Anime Hero, and today marks a second anime character profile on this channel. This video features Zebra from the Shonen Jump series Toriko. Zebra is a gourmet hunter who basically hunts game and searches for rare ingredients. He is also part of the four heavenly kings which consists of Toriko, Coco, and Sunny. While they all known each other since childhood, Zebra is described as a problem child due to his violent temper, dangerous strength, and selfish personality. In the beginning of the series, he is arrested for his crime of causing 26 animal species into extinction BY EATING THEM! Because of this, he is absent from the start of the story, only appearing through foreshadowing and descriptions. Such examples include the appearance of the character, Match, who claims to have fought Zebra before. I barely escaped with my life. Zebra, that was his name. And every scar I've got etched on my body came from that battle and all from one overwhelming attack. Scenes such as this would provide much build-up and anticipation of his debut, as anyone would be curious on this character's prowess. Further excitement grew when hearing of his exploits of surviving his execution. Repeatedly, the style of execution used was dismemberment, where dinosaur-like beasts would pull the death row criminal. However, Zebra purposely asked for this treatment as a form of workout. During the Gourmet Pyramid arc, Zebra is finally released on parole and would have his sentence revoked with the condition of discovering 100 species of ingredients and capturing 500 criminals, which he accomplishes rather quickly. When we first meet Zebra, the first thing that should catch your eye is his mouth as most of his skin is missing, giving a rather gritty display. Speaking of gritty, upon his parole, the first thing he does is murder inmates who spoke badly of him and seems to get away with it. While Zebra does appear as rather plain in personality, there's a little more to him. Aside from his known short fuse and eagerness for conflict, he's known to hate a certain type of person. While Zebra hates arrogance, he is a bit contradictory as he tends to boast his own strength as the strongest. He describes himself as a walking environment which causes extinction to those who can adapt to him. In other words, he follows the natural law of survival of the fittest which is fitting as this series revolves around eating powerful beasts and exploring dangerous habitats. However, Zebra is so boastful about his supremacy that he even insults environments that have a death toll such as a desert. <laughs> While he does hate liars and cocky people, I always wondered if Zebra was betrayed by someone he trusted which would enforce a greater emphasis to this mindset. But no additional information is known about his past other than being a starving orphan. Gourmet Pyramid is the primary story arc which focuses on Zebra. While he does appear as a main character from that point onward, his progress as a character has only increased slightly. During his time at Gourmet Pyramid, he met Chef Komatsu, Toriko's combo partner. At the start of their encounter, Komatsu showed defiance towards Zebra's release but eventually saw some good in him. When Zebra was released on parole, it caused an epidemic that shook the gourmet economy due to the worry of his ravenous appetite. This eventually caused two fighting nations to create a truce as Zebra was a greater threat to their survival. That truce ended up saving lives which led to Zebra being labeled as a messiah by the villagers. I always felt this scene displayed Zebra as a necessary evil to the series, but as the story continues, Zebra seems to be more of an anti-hero. Going further into his relationship with Komatsu, Zebra saw his skills as a chef satisfactory to his needs and wishes to hire Komatsu as his personal combo partner. A deal is made with certain requirements that basically force Zebra to behave and not cause unnecessary conflict such as killing for sport. Since then, Zebra has followed the deal agreements and has been cooperative with other people. But whether this is out of a change in heart or purely for his self gain is ambiguous at this point. An example includes his time inside the pyramid where Zebra would aid Toriko in battle. But as said earlier, his motivation was purely for his benefit and not some act of repentance. Oh. 
お前その体で助けたわけじゃねえぜ手っ取り早くエネルギーを生産する方法がある While he has shown to help some people in need, such as in the 4th Beast arc, I'm uncertain whether Zebra has some redeeming qualities to him. Currently, his actions can be interpreted as a way to display his power and gain some glory in the process. He doesn't seem to mind people fearing him, but does show an interest in fighting strong opponents, which often attack people. Basically, whether he's good or evil, his daily life seems to follow the saying, killing two birds with one stone. As his heroics get him the fight he needs and keeps him out of prison. Probably the best example that supports this theory is the short gourmet Santa arc, where the heavenly kings would deliver food to the needy, in which zebras refuse to help. He instead focuses on completing his full course, which involve exploration and hunting. His actions in the Thorigal series thus far place him as an anti hero, as he has yet to do something villainous such as murdering civilians. Because of this role in the story, I tend to get reminded of Vegeta's role at Planet Namek, as he was forced to help Goku and company, but never relinquished his goal of immortality. Unlike Sunny, who began as rather selfish as well, Zebra has yet to truly perform a heroic deed with no profit. The Heavenly Kings all behave differently with Zebra, but are willing to put up with him. So far, the only real connection Zebra has is with Thoriko, as he views him as a great sparring partner and rival. Since his physical strength is comparable to his own. Other than that, the story seems to be hinting that he will eventually forget about Komatsu and join forces with the chef Brunch, aka Buranji, as they both seem to be the major powerhouses and standouts among the current generation. I think this is enough information about his characterization and onto what makes him so dangerous. Known as the strongest of the four heavenly kings, Zebra holds the most destructive power and range due to his ability of using sound based attacks. Aside from the techniques traveling at the speed of sound, Zebra can also detect sounds from large distances, which rain in hundreds of miles and apparently capable of destroying an island or a state. However, out of his arsenal of sound attacks, the most mysterious one is the death sound. After fighting for so long, Zebra has begun to hear the Grim Reaper's footsteps. He somehow changes this into an attack that brings death to his target. Whether Zebra can control or summon the Grim Reaper is unknown. It's also uncertain how this technique works, as Zebra could just spam this to anyone. But from what little information is given, The death sound seems to only work on those on the verge of dying. The requirements to activate this attack may have been the author's writing to weaken it as it's too powerful, or this is simply a dramatic way to kill an enemy. Since Storygo is still being published, all of this information is pure speculation and nothing is set in stone. While on the subject of speculation, I think it's time to end this video with what characters inspired Zebra. From browsing on comments on Storygo related videos, I read people saying things like Zebra was based on Vegeta, Zoro, and Hiei. While it's true they do play the badass role of the series, Zebra is not based on any of those characters. You have to go all the way back to the 1980s to know that Zebra is based on Rao, the villain of Fist of the North Star. The most common feature is their physical design of having dark skin and large builds. Hilariously, most of the time, these characters. Don't have eyebrows. And if you put their faces side by side, oh my god! Rao and Zebra have more in common than just appearances, for there is enough material to make a Venn diagram. Both characters ride massive manly horses, being Rao's Black King, and Zebra having a skyscraper sized zebra named the Daruma Horse. Both of them have no living parents and were adopted into a family by a single father, who would later be their mentor. Both are the strongest out of four stepbrothers. Both have an ambitious attitude and are usually never intimidated by others. They each have a rivalry with the main character, being Kenshiro and Toriko. This especially has more emphasis as Toriko is based on Kenshiro. Rao and Zebra are threatening at a global scale. They both share what my friends like to call the tree trunk forehead of doom. And for some reason, whenever I see Zebra unintentionally save these villagers, I get reminded of episode 74. Where Rao confronts these villagers and ends up sparing them. 
But before I end this video, there's two more characters that could have inspired Zebra. The first is from the short boxing manga named Bakudan, from the creator of Sakigake Otogojuku. In this manga, we follow Baku, who is a Rao-inspired character, and surprisingly enough, he has a vulgar attitude, much like Zebra. Lastly, did you know Shima Bokuro had another jump series before Toriko? The series known as Takeshi, which featured a Rao slash Zebra looking character, and that's all I know since none of the manga is licensed or translated. So that's it for this video, and the next character profile will either be Jonathan Joestar or the God Ham from Berserk. In the description box, there will be certain Toriko related videos talking about the series or videos relating to Zebra. I'm the Anime Hero and I review anime so you can enjoy it.